Hello everybody. Welcome back. We are getting ourselves back into some Baldur's Gate. I feel like it's been ages since we were playing. That's right, that's what we were doing, wasn't it? Uh heck. Hong Kong. Looking ahead. Oh, that took the edge off. I need to get code in here. I need his help. Cherry pie crumb bars. Sounds yummy. Things. Okay. Well, fuck. Holy fuck. Come on, then. Get 
Pues. Dude, what the fuck? There's like 15 of these motherfuckers. Don't linger. It's a long way to go still.
Nice. Now time to rest. Jeez. That took a lot out of me, man. I never pick up a axe. It would be with the shovels. It'll take a while for us all to recover. 
but you've helped us take the first step. Of course. Where can I find a pickaxe? May you keep balance. Maybe I don't want to. Oh no. What the hell happened? 
shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Another step forward. Hmm? No one stopped me yet. Moving in. She deserved better than that. A poor owl there. No worries. And when you say new kitten, is this actual kitten? Nice. The owlbear is dead, dude. Talk about sad. Uh, so... Um... I have to upgrade. And since you are a Shadowheart fanatic, I figured I would get your input about now I should upgrade. What am I to do? Magically sealed. Can't go ape smash on this thing. This is no time to waste. Still alive. So that's progress. Level six. Oh, I guess never mind. I guess it's not going to give me any options to customize, so. Gotcha, gotcha.
8 to 48 damage. Holy fuck. Ben. Oh, okay.
Whatever it takes. Is that blood? No, never mind. Can't slow down. King. Someone there. Mm. 
Step quick. I wonder what the next move is. have seen everything. are answered you should leave it or even destroy it if possible this rubbish is an offering to Saluna at best it's worthless at worst who knows could be cursed trifling with that moon witch will only bring you trouble Shah's guidance is clear Damn. Oh shit. <laughs> This tome describes the ancient initiation rites observed by some who worshipped the moon goddess, Saloon. When a youngster came of age, they would be left to fend for themselves deep in the wilds. There they would show their skills of navigation and self-reliance, as well as their determination to return to the moon maiden's silvery glow. Once they found their way back to their people, their faith in standing as a follower of the saloon would be beyond any doubt. Interesting. Rites. Barbaric nonsense.
a Mantine Forge.
Eldrick, all right. Down it goes. Don't waste the stone. What the fuck is this? I don't remember subscribing to any Centurions. Um, what's the shit? That has 300 health. What in the actual fuck? Now this is my happy place. Aye, aye.
Damn. Nothing. Okay. Hmm. Well, that sucked. <laughs> But clearly, I am not ready for the Adamantine Forge. Okay. Um let's see. <laughs> well, that is not where I wanted. Oh boy, oh boy, we're about to get high. <laughs> As our circle grows, so shall your song. Wherever you go, only listen, and you may hear it. Bye. 
same as us, I expect. We've had some rest. Maybe we can still go back to the other one. No, no. Our world is bigger than any one of us. We are one. No need for me to ask how you fared. Some of my kin have already made it here, safe and sound. It's past time we were back in the city. But if you find yourself there, call on us. The Iron Hand Gnomes are good friends to have. I... I heard about Walbrun. But the cause is bigger than any one of us. You've made sure his work is done, even if he's not there to see it. He'd be grateful. We've had some rest. Maybe we can... Soldier. What about it? Had to let off a little steam after facing off with those ignorts. Granted, the fire lasted a little longer than it should. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Let's me burn as hot as the hells. Seems to be running in overdrive since I left Avernus. Won't be seeing my mechanic anytime soon, so I'll just make the most of the extra heat. Just don't get too close till I've found a way to calm it down. High pain tolerance and a dynamic duo of truly shitty bosses. But it's a bit early in the game to be getting into tragic backstories. Let's save the Scar show for later, after we've worked up an appetite for tragedy. Meanwhile, I'll need to find someone who can tune up my engine sooner rather than later. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things, if I can find him. Who knows? Maybe I can run like this indefinitely, but maybe not. Thanking you. A tune-up would give this rust box of mine a new lease of life. Fuller. I like that she calls it a rust box. Copper for your thoughts. Gives me energy. Power. But you've seen it in action. Very hard to control. If I'm excited at all, angry, nervous, delighted, enticed, I burn hot. Hot enough to burn anyone who gets close. I, I try not to think about it. I still think about it constantly, but, you know, I try. One of these days, I'll sort the whole infernal affair out, get myself cooled off, and start making up for lost time. But not today. What's on your mind? We 
were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine, but I wasn't even her strongest fighter. She favored me like a child favors a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. I don't know. You think she'd have more important things to do? Devils and their pride. No kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. <laughs> it had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. Lady of Sorrows guide us. Did you want something? All that's happened. You have a talent for understatement, you know that? Specifics, please. Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Find a way to rid ourselves of these things. I'm not too hopeful that a gith crash will actually prove our salvation, but worth keeping in mind. Does it even need to be asked? We're beyond me merely liking you. I think I'm a different person owing to you. I suppose some would commend our actions. Goblins would have raised that whole place to nothing if it weren't for us. No excuse to rest on our laurels, though. We've still got our own problems to contend with. I suppose we'd go our separate ways. Not a slight on your company, of course. Home. Baldur's Gate. There's someone waiting for me there. Someone I have to reach, as soon as possible. Thank you. And you're right, it's a delicate matter. Not something for light conversation. Worse than the last I saw you. <laughs> Thanks, boss. We'll be looking a lot worse if not for help from a friend.
The true soul. The battle. Too many distractions. There is still truth to uncover. Well, let's see what you've got. That's all then. The true soul. The battle. Too many distractions. Well, let's see what you've got. That's all then. All right.
the gnomes that do it. But the chiseling is remarkably intricate. At any level, they accept the two flee. Inhabitants are drowsized as you leave. The skeleton, then. Quiet. I'm thinking. Probably inhabited by whoever those skeletons were the other time. Absolutely not. But you could kill in history itself. Yes, this again. Hells, if Smug could see me now. All right, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna start Act Two. Ah, Plot thickens. The plot thickens. Huh. Guess I was kind of expecting something a little bit more. We offer our pain to the Lady of Loss, that she may truly know her faithful.
can't afford to stay idle. We offer our pain to the Lady of Loss, that she may truly know her faithful. Not as bad as it could have. A quick rummage. How oh, for a skeleton key. My faith will guide me. Time to dally. What's the story? Be careful, I bind. We offer ourselves to the darkness, that blessed Shah may give us her mercy. Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if perchance you retain among your traveling companions <laughs> a man who adheres to the given name of Gale? Should it be the nature of our acquaintance that interests you? You may safely classify Gale and I as friends. Should it be the nature of your present interlocutor that you desire to drag from the dark and unknown, then I should be glad to aid in your quest for illumination and identify myself as Elminster. Elminster Ormar. Now, if this answer satisfies you, let us linger no longer in this limbo of indecision. But settle on your knowledge of the individual I seek. Jesus, Pete. Talk about long-winded. <clears throat> Ever a man of leisure. Would it pain you greatly to assist me along the little voyage I intend to undertake to this aforementioned camp? And I would confirm it to be so. Please, after you've been. My thanks for your excellent guidance. Ah, and yonder I spy the object of my pursuit. Elminster? The very same, Gale. 
And a fair bit miffed he is, too, finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I don't understand. How so on my behalf? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gail. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it. Alas, such luxuries require the beneficence of time. And time, as I'm sure our friend here will attest, is the very luxury of which we're all too bereft. Oh. For the love of... Fine, fine. I'll turn a deaf ear to the clarion calls with which my scorned stomach beseeches me. Graver matters are at hand. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Jesus. Right. Indeed. Um, this guy is so long-winded. What the um, fuck? Well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Thank you for that most considerate reminder. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now but even so you're to be given a chance of redemption mistral would consider forgiveness she would consider what she considers to be forgiveness mistral is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both she knows of your strife with the absolute that most insidious of evils. They choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what waves we are building up to be do not discount yourself and by the same token do not discount your enemy you must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive it threatens all who live, even those who are undying, it threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you. I doubt not your conviction, but Gale has 
An unnatural advantage. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be hell. Or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. Glad it's not just me. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend, but such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ere come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion. Be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. Brave or stupid, I've proved myself the latter too many times where she's concerned. For Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Ugh. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course. We offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. <laughs> if there was, I'm sure the goddess of magic and the greatest wizard who ever lived would have identified it. 
But alas, only one solution is offered. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Hmm. Then I suppose there is nothing more to be done but find the heart of the Absolute and stop its beating. There's something I need to say. Something important. Can you spare a moment? First a parasite prods at our heads, then the shadows close in. More than ever, we need each other's trust. And I fear I've been less than honest. The man I call my father. More precisely, Grand Duke Ravenguard of Baldur's Gate. Grand Duke Ravenguard? One of Baldur's Gate's most influential and beloved figures. Every Baldurian knows his name. I should have said sooner, but our relation was no matter of pride. Not least for him. You heard right. My father and I were close once upon a time. ...until he disowned me and cast me out of Baldur's Gate. I can't tell you more. The pact forbids it. My lips are quite literally sealed. The inevitable consequence of inseparable events. You still deserve to know. There is more to me than infernal power and pacts. My story is one of two men. The Blade of Frontiers. A man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak. Oh my gosh. And Will Ravenguard. A memory of a memory. A man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the Blade. A man of, shadow of memory. Mind. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The yes, give me the your they were the blue story. Hosting the fancy balls and Not that I really them. asked. Fathers I've got a secret. My daddy was rich. A coin in the coffers. He disowned he a me, though. I'm not a trust fund fist. kid anymore. Brave as Balderin, stubborn as a deep rofe. Daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance. Yes and no. Father taught me the four pillars of power. He reckoned I'd follow in his footsteps. First as a fist marshal, then as a duke. Vanquish evil, maintain order, save the world. But a duke makes bedfellows with more monsters than he slays. Father called it diplomacy. I called it hypocrisy. In the frontiers, there is no posturing, no diplomacy. Ugh. I slay monsters. I don't consort with them. Even if I might look like one. Well, you consorted with a demon, so there's that. wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. He gives in and surrenders his find to you. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily. His tail wagging even faster. I am mildly annoyed that I have an owl bear egg in my bag because I don't want to eat it. I want to hatch it. How do I hatch it?
camp life seems to suit the young owlbear. His coat of feathers seems fuller. His eyes look bright and inquisitive. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tisu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps, demanding black it may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people? Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. The disc appears in your mind's eye. Lazel sees it too, and considers the vision. Tiersu markings. Ancient. I recognize them, but I can't make sense. No. Wait. The texts are enciphered, but I've solved the pattern. It's a story. About... About Orpheus. Your head buzzes in concert with Lazel's, but it hardly matters. Even without the connection, you'd recognize her discomfort. Drivel, all of it. Gith declared Vlakith queen of the Empire, and her own son defied her. Orpheus would have ceded control to the Geish. She did nothing of the sort. Thank your good fortunes, I'm a tolerant woman. Or I'd have sliced off a few toes for suggesting it. It is over where I am concerned. It is through conflict that we strengthen our bonds. Yet I do not recommend Shadowheart seek it again. The next resolution may not end in her favor. is upon us as foul as I remember it perhaps even worse but with the oak father's blessing we may soon see it banished from these lands this land is more than just soil and rock root and leaf it is a living being in the form of a young fey boy with the forest itself in his eyes. His name is Thaniel. I've met him in my meditations, but since the curse was unleashed, I have not felt his presence. He is its prisoner, I fear. And as long as he remains so, his domain will lie in darkness. But if we can find him, we can break the curse. If you learn anything of the shadow fell, or of a boy with the forest in his eyes, find me at once. I can't be exact, unfortunately. Time and the shadow curse won't have been kind to any traces that would have been left behind. A living witness is unlikely, I'll admit. 
but perhaps there'll be an unliving witness or some lingering echo of what we seek. Don't worry. If you find something, you will know it. Alright, well, I think this is about where I'm going to end it. We're in a pretty good spot. We just started Act 2. Uh, we have some pretty decent information that's already been provided. And... This is a pretty good opener for the beginning of stream next week. So, I'm going to sign off. And I hope you all have a great day. Well, evening in that case. Bye-bye.